Well, we'll begin this morning, gents, with a presentation from Mr Chong, as I said, he's from ACC, and he's here to talk to us about something that's been in the news quite often this year, and that is concussion. And we're aware of the media coverage of concussion and just how serious that has become and an issue in contact sports. Uh, and look, one thing we've noticed is Mr Finch, the Director of Sport, has been running concussion protocols through most sports uh, and, and those who have been brought to his attention. But we need to be under, we need to be very, very clear that if you have any of these symptoms, you need to get them seen to and sorted out because it is a growing problem. And as the nature of schoolboy rugby in particular changes and the size of some of the people that we see playing in, and we've even got to the stage now in the last couple of days you may have seen in the media the coverage about uh, testing for performance enhancing drugs at schoolboy rugby level. Now, if that's the case, that's incredibly sad, but I guess that reflects the changing nature of schoolboy rugby and certainly something that uh, those of us on stage today would never have even contemplated being part of the game when we were at school. Uh, but as I said, a very, very serious issue facing us at the moment, and I'd like to invite Mr Chong forward to address you this morning. I'm Nick uh, from ACC and New Zealand Football. All right, and today uh, we're here to talk about concussion. Just to get us quickly started, um, first off, just raise your hands. Uh, who here has had a concussion before? Cool. All right, and a lot of hands down. All right. Now, how many of us in this room would actually be able to recognise if someone has a concussion or would even know what to do? Just raise your hands. Yep, so not so many of us. Cool. So that's what we're here to cover today. So we're going to start off with a few questions and I just want you to think about these uh, just by yourself. Cool. Question one. Do you have to be knocked out unconscious to have an concussion? All right. No. Only 10 to 20% actually occur with a knockout. All right. So when you think about that, that's 80% of the time. A right, knockout won't actually happen. Question two. Do the symptoms of a concussion appear immediately? Right. If you're thinking yes or you're thinking no, you're both right and wrong. That's sometimes. Sometimes the symptoms can take hours or even day to, days to appear, even though they can also appear immediately. Question three. Do you have to be hit in the head for a concussion to occur? If you're thinking no, you're correct. So then what is a concussion? That's why we experience technical difficulties. <coughs> a concussion is a type of traumatic brain injury, or TBI, caused by a bump, blow, or jolt to the head, or by a hit to the body that causes your head and brain to move rapidly back and forth. This sudden movement can literally cause the brain to bounce around or twist in the skull stretching and damaging the brain cells and creating chemical changes in the brain. What you might not know is that these chemical changes make the brain more sensitive to any increased stress or injury until it fully recovers. Cool. All right. So today, what can I do about it? How do, we, how do I know when someone's been cussed? How do we know when someone's been cussed? What do we do? If someone is concussed, and we know they're concussed, what next? All right. Well, ACC Sportsmart, we use the three R's. All right, and the three R's are recognise, remove, and refer. All right. So the first step, obviously, how do we know when someone's been concussed? Recognise. All right. So this is recognising the symptoms of concussion. All right. Physical signs, what you might see. All right, so these things can appear simultaneously. You may have more than one, or you may just have one. All right, so they may have loss of consciousness, or non-responsiveness, disorientation or confusion, or simple things like grabbing or clutching of the head. All right. Well, they may. Second sign of recognizing is memory, and this is things what they might say. Right. 
So by asking them simple questions such as, did your team win last week? What position do you play? Although these seem simple now, in reality, the reality is, if someone has experienced a concussion, this will in reality be quite difficult for them to answer. All right. Clinical symptoms, what they'll feel. All right, so those of you that raised your hands earlier may have felt some of these symptoms before. For so things like blurred vision, nauseousness, dizziness, confusion, or even drowsiness are just some of the clinical symptoms of what you may feel if you're suffering from a concussion. All right. Then we move on to our red flags. These are things which generally will require hospitalisation, alright, and this is after those other symptoms have appeared as well, alright. Things like vomiting, seizures, increased confusion are just some of the red flags which require hospitalisation after a suspected concussion. Right. So what do we do if someone's been concussed? Well that moves us on to our second arc, which is remove. Removing the, removing the player from play. Right, any athlete with suspecting concussion should be immediately removed from play and you should not return to the game on that day until you're assessed medically. So when you're removing the player from play, right, apply the doctor's ABCs first all right, and always treat it as though they've got a neck injury if it's severe enough. All right, and if there's more serious concern, obviously dial 111. So we know that you're concussed, what do we do next? Alright, we should be looking at refer. Alright, refer them to a medical doctor for assessment. Only a medical doctor can actually diagnose and clear you of a concussion. Alright, and it's essential both to confirm the diagnosis that it is a concussion and to assess the further risk of any complications. <coughs> If you guys are away in a tournament, it's always handy to note where a medical centre is or the hospital, all right, in case an emergency should occur and not just necessary for concussion. Cool. So there we have it, our concussion, recognising the signs, the three R's, recognise, remove and refer. Cool. So we've done all those steps, all right, what happens next? Well, we should all be looking at rest, recovery, return. So all of you that raised your hands earlier should have followed these three steps. All right. Rest until you're symptom free. All right. Recover by following your medical doctor's advice. All right. And gradually becoming more active. And then finally, return. And that's returning to the full demands of the game. So obviously you begin with training all the way through after you're cleared by your medical doctor. I know what you're thinking, I don't want to do these three hours, All right. I want to play the final, tournament's one week away, so I ask you this next question. Are you more likely to have ongoing issues if you return too early? The obvious answer should be yes. Statistically speaking, you're two to four times more likely Right, to have a second concussion if you return too early and that's just after your first. And if it's your second concussion, statistically eight times more likely to get a third. After the third concussion or even after your first concussion, you may experience a decline in general health for the next 10 years. So, although most people do make a good recovery from a concussion, it is important to take what may seem just as a little bump or a hit seriously. What's going to happen is I'm going to provide you all with these ACC Sportsmart wallet cards okay? and this can stay in your player kit and it outlines all the steps that we've just gone over today right? with all our three hours, both return to play three hours and three hours there. Okay? So the point there, keep that on you and make sure that you recognise when that potential concussion has occurred. If you guys do want any further information on concussion, right, you guys can head to accsportsmart.co.nz slash concussion, right, and there's more information on that uh, available for you guys. Alright, thanks guys.
and as Mr John mentioned, it is something we need to, to be very, very mindful of. And I know many of you as young men will not give too much thought to what your bodies are going to be like in a few years. You need to look after them now, otherwise you will pay the price a little bit. And we've seen in recent years a, a couple of uh, senior sportsmen or high-level sportsmen who've made the courageous decision to retire because of uh, potential problems arisen, arising from concussion. And one of our uh, recent old boys, Josh Barnes, some of you in the senior school may remember him as a nationally ranked distance runner. Uh, while out training, he looked down to check his watch, to check his time at a certain juncture in his run, and he ran headfirst into a concrete lamppost, which he would be the first to admit wasn't the cleverest thing he's ever done. Uh, three months later, he was struggling because of concussion to do his exams at university. Um, and so the ongoing complications that can arise from one being to the head of series, so make sure you look after yourselves in that regard. So gentlemen, now to the...